Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is up, JL Life? Mo here. Guess what we get to do today? Oh. You see, Mr. Powers, I love gold. Gold zinc plated skids, baby. So, guys, the skids finally came in from Metal Cloak. We got the whole belly skid, the diff skid. Can't wait to get this in. We're going to go ahead and take some measurements of bromance underneath. Uh, we're going to see how much clearance we're going to get. I'm super excited. I finally get rid of them cross members and hopefully I uh, won't be getting stuck so much when I'm trying to go over certain obstacles here in my area. Yes. Okay, guys. So the lowest point is going to be the front cross member. This little one. Measured it. We are at 13 inches. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take them out and see if we gain any extra clearance. Just not having the bulkiness of it and the randomness of it is gonna be beneficial, even if we don't gain much. So real quick, before I crack these open, I just wanted to show you uh, how the skids arrived to me. They came in these crates, the crates were exposed. I'm not complaining about it. The skids were not damaged. Um, the skids are actually really tightly placed in there. They're not rattling around. Um, but yeah, that's how they came. Then all the hardware came in its own little box. But there you go. So real quick before we get into this, I just want to explain why I decided to go with the Metal Cloak over the other th uh, the other two major brands. When I was doing my research into skids, uh, there were three main ones. There was Artec, there was Rock Hard, and there was Metal Cloak. I decided not to go with the Artex uh, because they were the most expensive, and they actually their skids did not come painted or powder coated, and that would be have something I added on top of it. I decided not to go with the rock hard because the steel plates in total weigh by 260 pounds. Yeah, that really, it's not something I want to deal with if I break something on the trail and I got to drop skids to fix something. I don't want to be dealing with that type of weight. And then there was Metal Cloak. Uh, they were $1,000. They already come with the, the gold plated zinc covering to protect it from the elements. Uh, that's why. All right, guys, we're under the transfer skid right now. It's gonna be the first thing that comes off. I'm gonna to wanna to take out this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this guy, and this guy, and that guy. And then it should drop out. We're gonna be using 13 and 18 mil sockets. Next thing we're going to need to take off is going to be the transmission skid, which is just this little bar and this guy. Three bolts, 18 mil. Uh, let's pull it out real fast. There's the transmission skid. Done. 
Okay guys, so the next thing we're going to be messing with is going to be the gas tank skid. It, the metal cloak will actually go on top of it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to remove the three bolts, the 18 mil bolts holding onto the frame. Uh, don't worry, the, the plate's not going to drop. It's supported in the front and the back still. And we're going to have to do some modifications to the gas tank skid in order to get the metal cloak skids to fit on top. So we're going to go ahead and remove these three real fast. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to place the skid on top. Uh, this one on the front is actually where we're going to be cutting. We're going to cut off the angle. Uh, we're going to place the skid over top of it just so we can mark what we want. And we're going to be cutting off this little section. All right, guys, in order to make the black marker a little bit easier to see, I just scraped it with a pick, uh, but you can kind of see what we're going to be cutting off. It's going to be using a cutting tool, more specifically an angle grinder. Uh, safety first, make sure you get goggles. Okay guys, so there's the cut. Wasn't too difficult to do. Uh, right tools always make the job that much easier. Hey guys, real quick before we go any further, let's talk weight. Here's what we're gonna be removing from the JL. These are the transfer case and the transmission skid plates. These weigh 20 pounds, and these are gonna be our new engine, tranny, and transfer case skids. The transfer case skid weighs 32 pounds. The engine tranny skid weighs 40 pounds. The gas tank skid weighs 60 pounds. Um, we're not going to be losing any weight taking off the Mopar ones. As I already said, the undercloak bolts on top of it. So it's going to be two skids there uh, to reinforce it. We're not replacing the old one. So the next step is going to be removing the gas tank skid bolt going into the cross member. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to go to something flatter, uh, as you can look at the bolt, I've hit it on some rocks, it's starting to pull away, um, getting damaged. Uh, one of the reasons I don't like this system is because the bolts protrude so much, and I don't like getting hung up on things like that. And of course you can see where I hit the rock even more. But, yep, we're going to take this guy out and go to the next step. I'm gonna have to grind the bolt a little bit just so I can get the socket on there. This would be a lot easier with the lift, no? Got it. 
we will not be reusing this bolt. You can... Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is putting on the transfer skid uh, plate. Um, it's gonna be seated in there. We're not gonna to torque it down because we're gonna to have to pull it back down after we drill some holes. Uh, the orientation, uh, the boat bend, I believe is what it's called, uh, is gonna be pointing to the driver's side of the Jeep. Uh, your little holes for your hardware are gonna to be towards the back of the Jeep. Uh, make it easy to line up. You also have this hole at the bottom corner. It's gonna be going right over this little screw bolt right here. Uh, of course, this is a lot easier with a second set of hands, but we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get this done. So line it up. Take it. So, it's a big one. You want a size eight for here. And let's go ahead and just get this into the frame here. Okay, so we got the back end bolted up. You need to do the front end. I'm just gonna put another two bolts in, like I said before. This isn't gonna be the final tightening, so we're just getting the plate in, plate in place so we can drill some holes. Okay, so now that this is seated up, uh, it's not torqued down, but it's, it's in place, we need to drill out the frame here with an 11 sixteenths uh, drill bit. So, Find the 11 sixteenths. Show of hands, guys, who's ever been in the middle of a project and it calls for a specific size of socket, wrench, drill bit, and you don't have that particular size. So you gotta go to the hardware store and get it. So, let's go. All right, guys. Got my $30 drill bit. Let's get this back and get this done. I wanna go wheeling. Come on. Okay, we got back. I'm chalking the front right now because my drill <laughs> doesn't fit. So I gotta jack it up so we can get it done. All right, so I don't have a center punch, so we're gonna improvise. I'm going back to no store. All right, so we need to mark the center. We're gonna drop the plate and then we'll drill. Um, I've already marked it a bit. Just get my little pick and Cool. And we'll just keep going. All right, now that we got the center punched, we're just gonna drop the plate again so we can drill the hole into the frame without having to worry about eating up the skids. So, all right guys, got the skid off. Now, let's go drill. That was a pain in the butt. There's the dang hole. Ugh. Hey guys, sorry we didn't get this done yesterday. I was a bit up on a time crunch because we were going willing. Um, was unable to get it finished, but I put the old skids on before we went out. Glad I did because I was hitting them up pretty good. Uh, so yesterday where I left off, 
was getting this uh, nut rivet put in. Uh, once you drill in the hole, uh, this should fit in relatively easy. Uh, and it came with a bolt in it and a nut inside the bolt. Uh, you basically just get two wrenches and you just start cranking them together to pull the rivet down just like a plastic rivet in theory. And that's where we're going to be having our extra bolt point to. All right, guys, next step is you need to put your transfer skid back on and bolt it up. Um, so let's do that real quick. I'm just going to prove that you can do this by yourself without a lift, huh? Once I get these two started, it'll go be a little easier than trying to Hold it up with my shoulder. Y'all get the point, I'm gonna finish putting the bolts in. We got these guys in, the countersunk bolts. I got that one just in, kind of holding it up. This is gonna to need to come back out, and the engine tranny skid is gonna be bolting on through the same holes. Uh, so that's why that one's coming out. And of course I got that little guy in as well, holding up that corner. Uh, the next thing we're gonna be moving up to is the engine skid. All right guys, motor skid bracket time. We got a long, we got a short. The long one will be going on the driver's side. The short one will be on the passenger side. Now, if you look closely, you will see an F on the brackets right there. And on this one, let's see, get it to pop up here. There we go, F. Uh, the F is to indicate which size bolts to the frame. Uh, and the other side will, of course, be getting bolted to the bracket. Just make sure when you're bolting it to the skids, not brackets, the, the brackets to the skids, and make sure you're bolting it on the inside of the skid, not on the outside. You don't want that to be something to potentially get caught up on. So let's get under there and get this in. Hey guys. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the cross member that the transfer skid is on, and we're going to take out that countersunk bolt, uh, and then we're gonna bolt up the engine and tranny skid, and continue to work our way up and get it installed correctly. So with this yay right here we can just take him back out like that you guys can see that one. all right guys 
Let's get the front stand bolted up. We got that bolted up, now we're gonna move up front and get them brackets in. What's up guys? So we're underneath the front diff uh, at the top of the, the skid. We're gonna be putting on our brackets. Remember long driver, short passenger, and the the laser etched F towards the frame. But anyways, we're gonna be bolting on one at one side at a time. And it's going to be bolting up here to the engine mount off of the frame. So I'm going to do that real quick. Here's that frame. to the engine mount. We're on the passenger side. Uh, there's two holes that you're going to be bolting that are going to be on the mount. A wider hole and a narrow hole. You're going to be bolting into the narrow hole on both sides. Again, this is passenger. We'll go over to the driver. There's the mount better orientation backing up. Uh, I still need to tighten all sides down to the to the frame, to the skid, to the skid. And down there, yep, on both sides. So I'm gonna cut away and do that real quick. Hey guys, I'm almost done. Uh, gas tank finished. Uh, so what we wanna do, this little tiny bolt, we're going to actually take it back out. We don't need him to help hold that core anymore uh, now that we've actually put some torque down on these guys but we're not done torquing um, it's holding up pretty well but so I'm gonna go grab the gas tank skid and I'm gonna put it on all right guys so got the gas plate skid rest up against my belly we're gonna push it back up over the stock one and we're gonna hand tighten the stock bolts into the frame. Guarantee, next set of hands to make this install a lot easier. Hell, even a jack. Just a, don't ask me why I'm not using one. All right, guys, so here's what I was talking about. Um, if you guys remember, this is the part of the bracket of the skid that we cut earlier in the video. Uh, nothing to do with metal cloak. The hole is obviously has enough room in order to make it fit. This has to do with the, the Mopar stock gas kid. Um, once I took the bolt out at the beginning of the video, uh, just this one, none of the other ones, shifted over dramatically uh, that much, obviously. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what I was struggling with, um, but we're just basically going to be pushing the skid back towards driver and it should line it up. I was just in a really bad position, but now that I'm, I got the skid held up, um, it should make it a lot easier. So let's get to it. All right. So I just went ahead and dropped it. Um, what had happened is I've hit my gas tank skids enough. It has warped it just enough to miss set like that. Uh, so what I'm really gonna do is just make the hole a little bit bigger in the skid uh, so I can easily bolt it back in. So let's drill out some, some steel.
I'm gonna sweep up these metal shavings real quick. It's digging into my back. All right, guys, round two, let's try this again. So make sure you got your three stock bolts. Make sure you get your 18 next to you. I did drill out the hole. Show it to you real fast. Let's make it a little wider so it'll fit easier. Lame and metal shavings. Good times. Alright, so your tank skid. Alright guys, we got it in. Uh, what I ended up doing was just cutting that back a little bit more. And I started with the front uh, skid getting that lined up before I started bolting in these guys. Um, everything popped right into place as I started torquing each side up one at a time. Uh, we got one more thing to do and we're gonna have to secure this other bracket to the back of the skid and it's going up to that bolt right there that's holding the skid on. So we're gonna need to take that out, bolt the bracket to the skid and put the factory bolt back in to include the bracket all right guys we're almost done so next uh, bracket we're going to be putting in is going to be the straight one it's going to go right over it's going to be connecting the transfer skid and the gas skid uh, just line up the holes put your bolts in and easy peasy all right guys the skids are done. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, keep staying tuned. I hope you like the skids. I'm gonna lie, I'm kind of like getting this video out and I did test them already. Oh, come look. Where's all my goals? Oh man, I was tampering the ground like crazy. I love it. No way I would have made it with them cross members. Take it easy, guys. Later. Forgot the other side. Oh my gold gone. Oh man. I almost forgot. I did measure it. My lowest clearance point now is 15 inches on the body, not the diff. Uh, so I've gained a total of two whole inches. Now it's not just with the skids, it's the skids with the spacer lift and the spacer lift is an inch and a half. So I've gained half an inch clearance just with the skids alone and that's huge. Ah.